I get asked more and more, uh, either here on the YouTube channel or uh, by my friends and acquaintances, um, if their slow old computer can run Windows 10. And I find that this particular topic about running Windows 10 on a slow PC, this is not really covered all that well on YouTube. You find plenty of reviews of very fast systems with quad core CPUs and a lot of RAM and SSD, but the brutal sad truth is people do not have this. They have their old crappy laptops with hard drives and little RAM and, and slow processors and they do not care to buy a new computer because it, it's not important for them. I, like the majority of my friends, they all have these slow old laptops and they always complain about, oh, it's being so slow because they all have hard drives, you know? <laughs> and I tell, I tell them multiple times, get an SSD, get a RAM upgrade, but they don't do it because it's not important for them. What is important though for them is if it can run Windows 10. And I know that also this answer comes up uh, on the internet a lot. Switch to Linux. And you know, I'm a Linux user. I use Linux on a daily basis, but I can see why, you know, people don't do this. They want to use Windows, they want to use Office, and they don't want to learn anything new. You know, they're just, they just want to use what they're used to. And you know, there are no technology enthusiasts like I am, or you who are probably watching this, but they just want to have a working computer that does like everything they need. And that is not gaming and not 3D rendering and not video editing. That's mostly office tasks, Microsoft Office and, and, and just web browsing and Facebook and mail. And that's not really anything all that intense. Basically, any computer can do that. So here is the question. Can Windows 10 be run on these systems? I have here a test system, um, which I found was very, very good to compare to what the majority, for example, of my friends have. Now, it's a little slower, but it gets there. It has a crappy 5400 RPM hard drive. It has a dual core Pentium chip, which is a dual core, but it's not really recent. And it has only two gigabytes of RAM. And so, how does it perform? Well, as you can see, it does run and everything works on it, but I can say right away, it is slow. And you know, what's so funny is that these people who ask me this question, they, they don't mind it being slow because they're already used to it being slow. Um, since, you know, all, all of these have hard drives, but I will just demonstrate to you how slow I mean. A 5400 RPM hard drive is just a bad, like a bad device to use as an OS disk these days. I will now launch Microsoft Edge. Yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there. Good. It's open. Awesome. Now, um, let's, let's continue here with the Explorer. <laughs> yes, it made it. So I promise you only one last thing before you fall asleep here, the settings. went faster than I thought. So as you can see, the overall navigation in the OS is everything else than smooth. And it's not something I could live with. But I think for those guys who only use this for writing a document, looking at a spreadsheet and then maybe have a Google search going on, I think it, you know, you could survive. You launch Microsoft Office once and, and, and you're good then, I guess. But just look at that, it's hilariously slow. And uh, I can't believe that, that manufacturers still sell their computers with hard drives like this in this day and age. So um, next is RAM usage. How does Windows 10 cope with only two gigabytes of RAM. 
Um, the minimum requirements for Windows 10 are a one gigahertz chip and one gigabyte of RAM. However, um, you might say, oh, it has double the requirements. Yes, but if you want to run more than one program at once or, or maybe two, then, then you have a hard time. For example, I've got Firefox open with a YouTube video um, and the Explorer window and Windows idling in the background. How much RAM do we use? We use 1.5 gigs of all the two gigs. So if we were to open up another program, which is, for example, LibreOffice, then we're getting dangerously close to maxing out the RAM. And when you max out RAM, the result is that this very slow system is getting even slower. And so I would really say two gigabytes is not enough. Um, and it's sad, I, I, I in fact saw like these very cheap convertible hybrid tablet lap laptop devices that still sell for two gig with two gigabytes of RAM and for like 300 euros. And please, like especially if you buy a new device, please just look uh, look for at least four gigs of RAM. Four gigs is I think fine for for these tasks I, I'm talking about, but two gigs, I've got here LibreOffice open. Let's let's do a writer document and let's see if we can still have some RAM left. Okay. It went up to 1.7, so we only have 284 megabytes of free RAM. Now, to the average run of the mill user, that's not going to mean anything. But for us computer guys, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You, you really can't do all that much anymore. You open up a couple of Explorer windows, and and it's gone. So, uh, yeah. Um, if you have only two gigabytes of RAM, no, or upgrade the RAM. Um, I'm sure it is possible. Like on, on these laptops, it's, it's always possible. Bump it up to four gigs and it's going to be a hell of a lot better to use. Now with RAM upgraded to four gigs, it's not necessarily going to be all that much faster, which is sad, but at least you have more... Uh, RAM to use with your programs and you can have multiple web pages open and and write a document at the same time for example um, what also nobody talks about is That on systems like this with a hard drive and only little RAM and just overall slow systems um, The updating process they take ages You You don't believe me how many hours of my life I have wasted looking at my friend's update screen on Windows 10 because it is taking freaking long. And, you know, Microsoft nowadays forces you these updates down your throat, so you will have to wait. Um, and then always people get frustrated and maybe they, you know, hard shut down the PC when it says it's configuring the updates. Don't do that. Don't do it. Because then it's going to crash and in the worst case, not even boot anymore. And I know what I'm talking about because I've fixed, I fixed so many computers for this very reason that people get annoyed by the updating process and they shut it down without, you know, letting it properly shut down. I haven't even told you the GPU in this system. It's a GT730, so by no means a beast of a GPU. Now, I put this 730 in here since I needed uh, a GPU to um, get the, the system working with Windows 10 because the integrated one doesn't work. But also, since I know that a lot of these laptops have dedicated graphics, maybe not as good as this one even, but they have dedicated graphics which um, brings me to the question, can it run YouTube? Now, again, I will not repeat myself. This is the last time I will say it. It will be slow, but you can run it. For example, here is a uh, 1080p video. This is a funny bug right now. So, 
So guys, um, as you can see, I don't know why the Windows taskbar glitched itself in there, but we can ignore that because as you see, we got a butter smooth playback of 1080p. Story looks different on 4K, but this is what most people would watch. They would watch Netflix, YouTube, and these stupid Facebook videos. And for that, as you can see, these old systems can totally do that. So watching your movies and stuff, you will be good on Windows 10 as well. So I'm in fact already done with my demonstrations here. Uh, I also wanted to show you Microsoft Office, but their trail version just uh, how you do the trail just sucks. I have to enter my credit card just to do a trail of a Microsoft Office? Come on. So uh, I used LibreOffice instead, but believe me, Microsoft Office will run. It will, will run slow. You will have to wait for it to boot up. But once you did it, it it's good. Then you can use it. Um, LibreOffice is about the same. Maybe it's a little more lightweight, but you can basically say yes, Microsoft Office is going to run and that's, I know, a, a very important question to a lot of people. So what is my verdict? Should you install? Yes, you should, because Windows 7 is going to be out of support next year and Windows 8 I think is already. And for these people who use this only as their Facebook machine that use it to store their photos only to write the documents and spreadsheets, to look at PDFs. You know, for these types of people, it is okay. Uh, it's not ideal, it's slow, it's frustrating, and, and people will still be pissed at their computers for being so slow. Yeah, um, also a very frequent asked question is, when something doesn't work, what the hell do I do? Yeah, if something doesn't work, it's usually a driver issue. And that can occur, especially if you have a very old system from the Windows XP Vista era. Uh, it could even be that the manufacturer of your laptop or PC is not even supporting Windows 10 anymore officially. And then you're maybe shit out of luck when it comes to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and stuff. But I can tell you, Windows 10 already brings a lot of stuff. Um, for example, I have not installed a single driver on this system, and this is system is from 07, 06. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, maybe even 09, but it's old. And I don't know if Dell even supports it on Windows 10 officially, but the Wi-Fi card works I put in, the sound works, even though it says here it, it's turned off because I unplugged my speakers, but it works. The microphone port works, everything works. The GPU even installed itself. And so nowadays with drivers, Windows isn't so much of a pain as it used to be, but I know that it can still be a pain. And maybe on your very old laptop, when it comes to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and maybe your the trackpad or something, just these little things that annoy you, SD card reader, I've, I've, I've had it many times that one particular piece of hardware just does not want to work on this unsupported, officially unsupported OS you put on it. But yeah, I guess if you go this route and install Windows 10 on a laptop or PC with a slow hard disk and low RAM, then you're you're not too much into computers anyway, and you can you can deal with it unless it's something important like Wi-Fi. So this is all I can say personally about this topic um i've tested some stuff and i would be totally pissed off to use it 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 would frustrate me i i would be pissed all the time just for having to wait for literally everything um and there is one magic trick uh you do this investment called you buy an ssd and you install it there and i guarantee you once you go ssd you do not go back it's even if your computer is very old and you've had it for so and so many years and you think it's it's time to upgrade and you actually don't want to buy an SSD. They are very cheap. They've gotten cheap over the years. You can get a 120 gig SSD for 30 ish bucks, 30, 40 bucks. It's insane. And there stuff like this where you click and then you wait for five minutes, stuff like this will be gone. It might not have 
more processing power and RAM, but at least the boot up time and the application opening and closing time is going to be faster. And that is a very important factor for these types of people. Yeah, I hope you learned something and I could answer your question. Obviously, every hardware configuration is different, so I can't say generally yes or no. But I can say it's generally a good idea to keep your computer alive as long as possible, especially if you don't even want to upgrade. Um, but maybe if you have very low RAM and a very slow processor and unsupported hardware, then it's maybe time to get a new computer. But try it at least and then decide for yourself. So yeah, um, I will also, yes, this question is going to be occurring. I know it. I am going to be providing a Microsoft uh, download link for, for Windows 10 down below because they make it very easy and very convenient and user-friendly to create your own USB thumb drive and you can do a clean installation or, or upgrade as you wish. I would always recommend a clean install, but you can do it either way you want. So thank you for watching and see you later.